How are you, Sean, doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Oh, awesome. Well, it's great to be able to catch up with you again and be able to talk about some brand new music from Gravedigger. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and what a great album it is. I mean, it's great to be able to see a, a finale to this amazing trilogy that has been going on in the band now for since 96 now with Fields of Blood, which is coming up the 29th of May through Napalm Records. I just think this is such a great classic album, and it's great to be able to see this theme uh, finally tackled again. Yeah, I, I'm really happy that you enjoyed this album. And uh, yeah, it's the end of... Uh a trilogy about Scottish history. And uh, yeah, we are really proud because uh, this year is the 40th anniversary of the band. Uh, Fields of Blood is the 20th uh, album of the band. And uh, to make an album about Scottish history is always special because uh, especially I love, love this country and uh, I'm really addicted to this uh, battlefield stuff and castle stuff and all this uh, famous people like Robert the Bruce or William Wallace, Queen Mary. And uh, I couldn't find a better topic for this anniversary CD, you know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, when you have two classic albums that came before it in this trilogy, I mean, this album really does just feel like it was meant to be a part of it. And, you know, both thematically, both musically. And again, you know, it's just like a great way to be able to wrap up this trilogy when it comes to Scottish history. And it's just great to be able to see that. I mean, especially considering, like you said, the 40th anniversary the band and the band's 20th album yeah yeah for sure uh what is your question <laughs> oh, oh no oh, oh no question there it's just that it was so great to be able to see that but um you know getting back into the questions there i mean what what was it like when you knew this was coming up i mean what was it like to be able to start writing for this album Oh, that was our idea when uh, two years ago I was with my family in, in Scotland and my boy uh, was 12 years at this time and I showed him all the battlefields and we moved to the castles and I told him the story about Scottish history and and he was really interested and, and at this time I'm, I'm noticed by myself that I'm not ready talking about this topic, you know, that, that I have to tell the people a little bit more about this and from this time on the idea was born. I called Axel from my vacation and said, Axel, what do you think about doing another record about Scotland? He said, yes, great idea. And uh, I started writing lyrics directly in my vacation. And uh, yeah, it was like uh, coming out of my soul. And uh, it was natural to write, to write this album. And uh, yeah, it, it was it's some kind of magic. Have you ever been to Scotland? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. Okay, you have to do it. If uh, the travel restrictions are open or uh, uh, finished, then you have to move one one day. You have to move to Scotland. It's it's fantastic. It's 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 a landscape you will never forget. And uh, to do an album about that is uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's uh, yeah, it's it's really awesome. Yeah, and I've heard so many great things about Scotland when it comes to. The, the landscape, uh, the nature, the, the history behind the country. I mean, there's so many things to uh, enjoy about the country. And, you know, th and that's why I always love when a band tackles history when it comes from uh, different countries or uh, different scenarios. And, yeah, you know, just uh, thinking about it again and just being able to have another album in, in this style and just being able to talk about more... Uh, about war being able to uh, cover so much ground with it. I mean, I really want to be able to check out the country one day and be able to enjoy all three of these albums at the same time. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it is, it's a soundtrack. If you travel to Scotland, uh, our albums could be a soundtrack for you. You know, if you if you rent a car and driving to the Highlands, listening to to uh, the heart of Scotland, it could be a very good idea for you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, once the travel restrictions let up, I mean, that definitely is something that is on my radar to be able to do for sure. And, you know, listening to this album, it's even more of a reason to do it. And, you know, being able to compare to uh, the previous albums, you know, it's just it's it's great to see that uh, the, the love and the joy for writing in this style, writing about these themes, writing about Scotland is still something that you keep very near and dear because this album just sounds like it's such a sincere love letter to the country. 
Yeah, uh, after after so many, uh, uh, I declare it uh, normal albums like uh, Return of the Repo or uh, The Living Dead or Healed by Metal. It was uh, a question of time that we return to concept CDs because uh, it's different if you if you uh, write a normal album uh, say is uh, then you have first a guitar riff more or less but if you start with a, with a concept CD you have at first a concept then you have the lyrics then you're thinking about okay this lyric what what I have to explain to the people with this kind of lyric how can I fit it with the music <coughs> and then yeah, you, it's, it's like uh, you're building a, a wall of uh, bricks, you know, standing brick by brick, and then at the end you have the wall there. And uh, that is, uh, and then also you have to do it like a complete album, you know. And uh, to write an album or to create an album about Scottish history or, or in general a concept city, it's like to do a movie, you know. Because I want to give the people some pictures with the music in their heads. Not only listen to the music, but also have something in their mind when they listen to the music. Oh, very much so. And that's all the more reason why I'm, I was so happy to see the singles that were released for this album. Because it does give off visually so much to enjoy. I mean, when you have something like Lions of the Sea... Uh, I, I really do enjoy that song. I mean, that just feels like a classic Gravedigger song. And then when you got something like Thousand Tears and you're able to have Nora from uh, uh, Battle Beast a part of that as well, too. I mean, it was great to be able to see her contribution to the album as well. Yeah, at first we had uh, uh, Alicia from uh, Arch Enemy in our mind, but she was overworked and she didn't have time. So we remember that we played a lot of... A lot of uh, shows together with Battle Beast and uh, then they have one killer track I will never forget it's uh, Black Ninja so uh, I said to Axel hey we have uh, Nora we, because she's a hell of a singer so we contact her and uh, she agreed from the first second said okay I want to do some some music with a legends grave digger from Germany and uh, yeah we did it she's so she can sing so emotional and give uh, give the voice of Queen Mary a new picture, you know, and uh, yeah, really proud to do it with her together. Oh yeah, and her voice just fits so naturally with the band too, and it was great to be able to see uh, her contributions with that as well. Uh, you know, when it came to being able to show these off uh, visually, I mean, how hard of a decision was it to be able to choose these two songs as singles? Uh, oh, we agree just together with uh, the record company. We have our favorites, and the record company had uh, their favorites. But uh, at the end, we 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 find a conclusion for these three songs, and we want to show the difference of uh, uh, the songs in between this album. And that is the reason why we choose these uh, three three tracks. You know. Oh yeah, and I think between all three tracks when it comes to All for the Kingdom and Thousand Tears and Lines of the Sea, I mean, it really does show that variety of the band and the variety of the album, and especially when it's a concept album, you don't want to be able to give everything away from, from it, and I think between all three of these tracks, I think there's enough to make you want to dive in and see what this album is all about. Uh, what is exactly your question? I did not understand now. Oh, no, I, I was just uh, uh, agreeing that uh, all three of these songs are oh, okay. uh, great choices to be able to show off the album in the different sides of the band. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because uh, there are so many different songs. Uh, there are a couple of more uh, different songs on this album to show uh, what's going on, you know. So uh, I think uh, it's a very interesting album also. Because it, it shows the band in, in different styles, too, you know? Oh, absolutely. So, with that in mind, I mean, obviously, Gravedigger is known for some of the best heavy metal artwork out there. And, of course, with the 20th album, the 40th anniversary of the band, and being able to include uh, this uh, Scottish trilogy, I mean, what was it like to be able to uh, put together the artwork for this album? The, the last year since 2003, we worked together with an, an artist from Hungary. His, his name is Gulia Havancak. And uh, for this album, for the new one, we, I thought that we like to do something uh, different because I want to get back to the, to the touch of Tunes of War from Andreas Marshall. 
and uh, I found a guy in on, on, on in Facebook who's doing normally uh, only uh, death metal covers, totally crazy stuff. But I liked his style, how, how he was painted or how he's painting these covers. And I contact him and say, well, would you like to do a Gravedigger cover? And he said, oh yes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, two hours later, I heard, had my first draft on the table here. And then, yeah, he did it. And I think it's awesome, yeah. So many details and you can't see the details on the CD, you know, and uh, but if you have this LP, this vinyl thing, uh, that is really, really great. For a CD, this cover is too, too good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just imagining that. I mean, when uh, the final, uh, the vinyl version does come out, and you're able to have that in your hands, and being able to see this artwork, and being able to see all the little details that's going into it, all the the battle and chaos that's going on in the cover alone, let alone being able to check out uh, the rest of the artwork of the album. I mean, it's just simply beautiful. Yeah, I agree totally. I, I like the cover, the, the colors also, and uh, the Green Highlands. And, the cover representing good the music on this album but that is important that the cover is uh, yeah showing what's what kind of music it is you know and uh, that is a union the cover and the music a unit oh very much so and of course another reason that i always appreciate gravedigger and again it's shown with fields of blood is that every single song feels like it could be something that could be played live and it was great to be able to hear that again and of course with everything that's going on in the world right now uh, a lot of live shows uh, possibly for the rest of the year uh, especially for the summer is uh, been canceled or postponed or whatever the case is and i can just imagine that um, it, it it's going to be a little disappointing to be able to not be able to promote this album live it coming up w with uh, the release of of the 20th album in 40 years in 2020 yeah it's a pity that we can't play any live shows i don't know when when it'd be possible to return to stage but uh, when we write songs we always keep an eye on, on it that we can represent uh, or play the songs also live how they will work out live and i think that the most songs on this album will work pretty good so pray for for the metal scene that the virus will disappear like mr trump says like an invisible virus someday <laughs> <laughs> But, but at the end, uh, nobody knows. And uh, as long as the virus is still alive, it's it's um, yeah, it's a problem to make shows, bigger shows, festivals. But hope will never die. Oh, that that is such a great outlook on it, and I really hope that that does happen too, where uh, this virus does become so minimal and uh, hopefully vanish, if not uh, everyone's bodies are able to become immune to this virus and we're able to enjoy shows and festivals and clubs again. Because I am just um, imagining, for the Gravedigger set, I'm just imagining the aesthetics that I'd be going into the live set, and I just imagine uh, how beautiful everything will look once... You you guys are able to get back on stage and be able to promote this album properly yeah for sure because uh, you write music uh, to perform the music live you know not uh, making records uh, for for nothing but uh, we decided uh, that we only go back to to stage if we got the freedom to do a real live show not playing in, in drive-in cinemas you know or streaming shows that is everything is boring a real heavy metal show needs sweat and screaming people and head banging and everything and if you were playing in front of 300 cars it's i never can imagine that that will happen in a good way so i hope that we get the freedom back next year to return to stage in a normal and practical way grave deal is used to and uh, yeah we will put some of uh, feats of blood songs in our set list put on the kills again and heading to the stage yeah oh yeah and i, I it's it's funny that you do bring that up i mean when it comes to all these uh, alternative ideas that people are coming up with with either live stream shows or uh, being able to like go to like a a drive-in movie ex except it's like a drive-in concert and all these other ideas that just don't seem like you would work out well i mean especially for heavy metal 
especially for a band like Gravedigger. I mean, that experience of being able to get as close as you can to the stage, being able to uh, cheer and sing along with the band, I mean, you, you just can't get that in any other experience other than being at a normal live show, and hopefully that does happen again, because there's so many anthemic songs that are from Fields of Love that really feel like it needs that representation, and of course, being able to actually tour behind 40 years of the band, I mean, that's such an accomplishment, and you guys deserve to be able to tour and promote the band on such a glorious occasion. Yeah, if you can't promote an album, that is, uh, yeah, that is, uh, it's a shame, you know. And uh, but on the other side, we don't have, uh, we don't have another chance, you know. We the only thing is that we can promote it through the internet. Thanks God, it's a good thing now, the internet, and uh, yeah, bringing the people uh, to our music, and then hope that next year everything goes the normal way, you know. Oh, very nice. Way, by the way, if we can't play any shows until next year, we will do definitely another record. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering about that, too. I mean, especially within uh, the last few years, being able to see uh, the, the amount of amazing work that's been going on throughout. I mean, especially since Heal by Metal. I mean, uh, being able to see the, the workload that's going into the band and, you know, if if unfortunately it does have to wait till 2021 i just imagine that there's so much great music that you have going on and that can be released in that time yeah for sure <clears throat> because our creativity won't die you know we, the virus can't kill creativity and uh, i think that we start uh, next month uh, thinking about new songs and uh, and we found a new concept for the next album already. <clears throat> so, yeah, life goes on beside the virus. And uh, we have a lot of ideas, excellent eye, and we will start definitely. We, we don't hang around and, and yelling what, what happened. Oh, we can't play any live show because of the virus. So uh, we give a shit on it and doing our, what we can do best, writing songs, and perhaps we can perform them in the future. Oh, and that's just got me so excited that uh, the band is already thinking that far ahead and having a concept for the next album. I mean, I'm very excited to see where things go because it really does feel like with every subsequent Gravedigger album, you guys are able to push yourselves uh, either in production or songwriting or the overall feel of the band. It just continues to get better and better with each release. <laughs> that is our target. We don't just want to step back, you know, and... Uh... That is the reason why we uh, really uh, take care of our own music and uh, we like to improve from album to album and uh, we sing a lot of our music. We have a lot of creativity and also we like to give the best quality to the fans and that's the reason why we make it like a master plan when we do a new record. Oh, that's such a smart way to do it, too. I mean, and, you know, going back uh, earlier in the conversation, I mean, whether you're writing a standard Gravedigger album and, you know, being able to tackle, like, darker themes, especially in the last few albums, like uh, with The Living Dead and with Healed by Metal, or being able to write a full-on concept album, like being able to finish off uh, the Scottish War trilogy here. I mean, I always love the different approaches that you take with it, and you make a the album like a master plan like you said being able to you know really give it your all b making sure that you're writing the best songs possible that fans are going to enjoy it and that the band is going to enjoy writing and playing those songs as well yeah what is exactly your question now Oh, oh, uh, oh, I'm just uh, continuing on with, with those thoughts. I, I just really do appreciate that so much time and effort goes into every, writing every single album rather than just uh, writing an album, then releasing it, writing an album, then releasing it. I mean, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into every single album to make sure it's the best that it can. And I'm, I fully appreciate that you do that with every album. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of hot blood uh, in this kind of music and also in the concept and uh, we working more or less on every album uh, yeah six seven eight months you know and uh, it, yet you have to listen on this album or in every album that is uh, yeah we spend a lot of time a lot of blood and sweat in, in, in writing our music creating good songs for the people outside 
and uh, for us it's uh, yeah really really important that people can listen to that you know not to, nowadays music is such kind such kind of fast food you know and uh, also with Spotify, people listen and say, oh, I don't like, I don't like. When I was a young kid, uh, metal, or especially music, was uh, culture, you know. Nowadays, music is some kind of fast food. Oh, absolutely. I see it turning into that every single day. And uh, so many musicians are just worried about having one good single off an album instead of making sure that the whole album is great. And that's all the more reason why I'm so happy to see that you guys wrote a full on concept album, because I enjoy listening to albums from start to finish. I love being able to hear the first track and how it gets to the last track and being able to see everything that goes in between and see where the band is at that, that particular time and with every gravedigger album there's so many great fun catchy songs a lot of the dark themes that go into it as well but every time that i put on a, a full gravedigger album i know i'm gonna enjoy it from start to finish and you know it, it might be a dying art form to to focus so much on the full album and making sure it's the best that it can be but i can't appreciate enough that you continue to do that yeah, we we like what we do best, writing music, heavy metal music, you know, and uh, that is our life, that is our passion, and we will carry on. I hope that we have another 10 years that we can celebrate and 50th anniversary some someday, you know. Oh, I would love to see that happen, too, and all the material that could be written in that time. And again, going back into it, I, I love the fact that e even though Fields of Blood is uh, coming out at the end of the month through Napalm Records, that you're already thinking about the next album and wanting to make sure that that's going to be the best that it can be when that gets released. Yeah, yeah, we are happy that it will come out in two, two weeks. And uh, yeah, we are really excited about what, what the people outside will think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. And again, I can say that I, I love this album. I love how everything ties in together conceptually and, you know, just continuing continuing on proving that uh, Gravedigger just gets better with every subsequent album. And it's awesome to be able to talk to you once again, to be able to promote Gravedigger and being able to now promote Fields of Blood coming out the 29th of May through Napalm Records. I can't wait for everyone else to be able to check it out in a couple weeks from today. And it was great to be able to get your insight into the band and into the album and hopefully everything that goes into the future as well we hope so too my friend and i wish you a lot of health yeah stay metal and uh, we can talk at the next record again <laughs>